Okay, well, um, just before we get started, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the lands upon which GovHub is built, uh, the Wadarong and Jar Jar Warong people. Uh, we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Now, the idea for the Government Hub came through an election promise that was to decentralise government services to regional centres such as Ballarat. Um, and the aim was to stimulate local economy and to revitalise the Ballarat CBD. Uh, so the brief for the Gulf Hub was to be home for a thousand government employees uh, with 600 new positions to the city and 400 relocated uh, from within Ballarat. Uh, the building is made up of two levels of basement car parking, uh, four floors of office above ground and one level of plant. And it's a five star green star building and four and a half star neighbours energy rating. Now the site that was selected uh, for this project was right in the heart of the, the CBD, um, shown here on this, this key plan. It was in close proximity to the town hall and a short walk to the um, train station. So this really facilitated easy pedestrian access to the CBD and, and great public transport connections. Now the project boundary shown here in red sits adjacent to the uh, Civic Hall and, and the public library. The starting point for us for this project was to consider the history on the site. And there's a long history of community activity uh, right from the gold rush days, it was a produce market, um, to more recently a, a civic hall where ACDC played here in 1977. Um, but in recent years, the civic hall became less used until it was eventually bought it up. So this project was really about repairing a, a city centre that was once a, a thriving part of the Ballarat uh, CBD. Uh, the civic realm between each of the buildings, old and new, is what makes the precinct a whole again. Um, we've created strong cross links uh, that meet within a central landscape court, courtyard. On Mayor Street, um, across the front of the site, um, the space between the civic hall and the gov hub creates a north-south meander through the site. Um, and combined with a, a front door of the civic hall is the more primary uh, community address for, for the building. The main business address is Armstrong Street uh, along here. Um, and we've created an east-west pedestrian lane connecting the visitors to the Gov Hub's main entrance lobbies and also through the central plaza. The character of the old Civic Hall is very much embodied in the varying color and texture of its uh, brick surfaces. Uh, we decided to use brick as a binding agent that connects paved surfaces and meeting pods um, and a consistent material around the edges and perimeter of the building at ground level. Uh, whilst not all the, all the brick is the same, um, we've introduced a, a warm tones and textures um, that really anchors the Gov Hub in its place. And this was a custom brick that we designed uh, uh, with a local manufacturer. In order to reduce the overall area of the building, uh, we proposed this idea of bringing meeting spaces down to ground level um, that all uh, the tenants of the building could, could share these facilities. So it really enabled us to shrink the, the scale of the building. Um, the brick chambers seen here in the, these images um, around the Gulf Hub at street level and contain these meeting pods and sort of frame, frame views out. The gable ends uh, uh, forms depart from a con conventional kind of uh, suburban scale glassy office building um, where the red zinc skin wraps up and over the roof and the outer walls facing the east and west cut down on the morning and afternoon heat load. Um, it also conceals the roof plant. On Mayor Street, where the precinct address addresses the city, you can see the large open gable end facing south, acting as a centre point to the rectilinear forms of the Civic Hall. Uh, the ends of the building are open up to reveal the activity of the workplace uh, beyond. Uh, between the Civic Hall and the Gov Hub, uh, there's a glazed infield building called the Conservatory, which is a landscape space in the tradition of the Botanic Gardens of Ballarat. Um, and this space really acts as an important arrival and orientation space within the precinct. Um, the glass roof provides protection from the wind and rain, capturing the winter sun, and this is also a naturally ventilated space. On level four, there's a large community space that has an attic feel to it, um, like being within a roof space that looks out over the city of Ballarat. And this is an important space that created um, uh, a sense of community for the 1,000 employees that were to come to the building, and in some ways serves as a companion space to the conservatory down at ground level. One of the main um, sustainability drivers for this project was the use of timber as a primary structural system. Um, when construction commenced in 2019, this project was the third largest commercial uh, timber frame building in Australia. At the time this building was being designed, timber construction on this scale had only recently gained momentum in Australia. In order to assess the commercial viability, two schemes, a concrete scheme and a timber scheme were developed and documented and went out to tender. 
Uh, and while there was a cost difference between the two schemes, uh, Development Victoria were prepared to invest in the many benefits Timber brought to a project like this. Um, and having had the benefit of two schemes documented, we had the data and the biggest benefit um, was a reduction in embodied emissions by approximately 53% between the concrete and, and timber scheme. Uh, the timber structure also provided a significant constructability advantages. Um, these included a significant level of offsite fabrication and reduced waste and noise pollution on site. Uh, the speed of erection was significantly improved with the overall construction program. Um, there was a clean and quiet construction site uh, with the obvious benefits to the surrounding occupied environment and a lightweight construction material also uh, reduced the um, foundation requirements. And you can see in the main public arrival foyer, we see this double height volume in part, which expresses the timber. The timber structure has that advantage of being a high aesthetic finished form, uh, where the structure itself is also the finish within the integrated fit out. And as we know, studies have shown um, that uh, being surrounded by timber uh, and wood has a positive effect on our health and, and well-being. Uh, the overall width of the floor plate was designed um, with maximising daylight in mind. And, and we really designed this floor plate based on 24 metres because we know 12 metres of natural daylight can penetrate the spaces quite well. Um, a nine by nine metre grid um, was designed for the workplaces, which is, um, which is a large span for timber and six by nine metre grid um, through the centre was ideal for meeting and, and breakout spaces. Right from the outset, we also wanted to design a facade that would help reduce the overall energy demands of the building. And, and unlike a traditional office building where floor to ceiling glasses sweep the entire perimeter of the elevation, we targeted right from the outset a 60% uh, wall to 40% um, glazing ratio. The windows were then carefully positioned between the nine by nine meter grid to ensure a good level of natural daylight would still penetrate the floor plates. And here you can see how these windows appear on a typical floor within the breakout spaces and, and meeting, meeting spaces. And in some ways, these windows actually became more powerful the way they framed views around the city. Um, and they also provided this unique identity and variety of space throughout the floor plate. One minute remaining. Um, so this project, um, and this is a good slide to, to finish up on, it's a good sort of summary. And, and it, the project achieved a four and a half star energy neighbors, uh, four star water neighbors, five star green star certified. Um, and we also achieved a 92% local content, which is incredibly hard to, to achieve. Um, as I mentioned, the timber structure yielded a 53% reduction in embodied um, energy. Um, and the timber was either 100% recycled or certified by recognized forest certification scheme. Um, the introduction of landscaped uh, areas enhanced the site's ecology and permeability cover. And then there was a number of elements like rainwater collection for toilet and irrigation. And, and the fixtures and fittings were all um, selected with energy efficient ratings. Um, one, of the, one of the big components was 43% reduction of total greenhouse gas emissions through energy efficient modeling. We have 125 kilowatt annual PV energy generation for building electric services. And there's a whole host of facade elements that I have touched upon, but probably with time remaining, just mentioning um, that we, stand, we set ourselves a standard well above the JV3 and NCC baselines. We had triple glazing out to, to the north um, and we were able to um, accommodate nat nat natural ventilation spaces at ground floor. And finally, the reduction of car spaces was, it was important to us um, and we really increased the bike parking um, uh, numbers for the project. And when we did have car parking spaces, we um, uh, were able to accommodate 50% of electric charging spaces. Uh, so thank you. And this is a project uh, we are very proud of at, at JWA.